Lead us in prayer, please. Yes, sir. Everybody bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, God, thank you for this opportunity to be in this room with these people uh, in this building for this city. Uh, God, I pray that you would continue to watch over us, continue to love us well, teach us how to love others. Um, God, for all the responsibilities that you've given us, all the blessings you've given us, God, I pray that you would continue um, to allow us to be good stewards of those uh, on behalf of this city uh, and this state and this country. God, we ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ross. Yes, Call this meeting to order the April 13th City Council for the City of Monroe. Uh, let the record reflect, please, that all members of the council are present. Um, I need a motion for the approval of the agenda, please. So moved. A motion by Mr. Nathan Little. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Moving to the approval of the consent agenda. This is the council minutes from last month, the executive session from last month, planning commission from last month, the revised historic preservation committee minutes from February and March, uh, downtown development authority minutes, convention of visitors bureau, emergency purchase, Bellmead primary electric project, and an IPT reserve sale. Um, I need a, an, a, a motion for approval, please. Motion to approve. I have a motion by Mr. Dickinson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gregory. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Moving to the public presentation. Ms. Gregory. Uh, many of you may know Lauren. Uh, she's with a child's voice. Uh, she is married to our esteemed uh, colleague, Tyler Gregory. You raise your hand. <laughs> Got a pinwheel. <laughs> You, you did, but you did very well. Um, let me make sure I'm reading the right one. I'm moving to the proclamation of the city of Monroe, Georgia, whereas according to the Children's Defense Fund's most recent State of America's Children's Report, there were 673,000 confirmed cases of child abuse and or neglect each day in America, in America in 2019, and whereas the Georgia Family Connection Partnership reports that there were 173 substantiated cases of child abuse and or neglect in Walton County in 2019, and whereas in 2020, a Child's Voice Advocacy Center responded to 113 cases of child physical or sexual abuse in Walton County by conducting forensic interviews, forensic medical examinations, and family support services, and whereas children may delay or never make disclosure of their abuse and sometimes formal reports of child abuse are not submitted to law enforcement or the Division of Family and Children's Services, and whereas the Center of Center for Disease Control and Prevention suggests that reported cases of child abuse may underestimate the true occurrence and estimate that one in four children in America experience some form of child maltreatment in their lifetimes. And whereas darkness to light reports that one in 10 children will be sexually abused by their 18th birthday and only 38% of child victims will disclose their abuse. And whereas according to darkness to light, victims of child abuse are significantly more likely to experience emotional, psychological, health, and behavioral issues and whereas with a strong support system and effective counseling, children are able to heal from physical and sexual abuse, and whereas children's advocacy centers like A Child's Voice work within the communities to spread awareness about child abuse, teach citizens how to recognize the signs and respond to child abuse, and utilize a multidisciplinary approach to coordinating care for families with the help of Walton County Law Enforcement, Department of Family and Children's Services, District Attorney's Office, school systems and mental health counselors, and whereas a Child's Voice Advocacy Center invites all residents of Walton County to participate in Child Abuse Prevention Month in April 2021 by sharing their time and talents to help create better, brighter, future, brighter futures for children and families. Now, therefore, I, John Howard, Mayor of the City of Monroe, Georgia, do hereby, hereby proclaim April 1st through 30th, 2021 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the City of Monroe and encourage all residents to become aware of the prevalence of child abuse in our community and learn how to properly recognize, respond to, and prevent instances of child physical or sexual abuse by supporting children and families and the agencies that serve them in the city of Monroe, Georgia, Walton County. In testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed to the great seal of the city of Monroe, Georgia, this first day of April, the year of our Lord, 2021, John Howard. Lauren, thank you for being here. Lauren, did, uh, I don't know how many you brought, the pinwheels? Uh, 
All the council has them and Logan, and I've got a couple more if anybody really wants a I'm pinwheel let, and a packet. I'm gonna let Logan take the pin, pinwheel home to his little, to his daughter. My daughter quit playing with us a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions for Lauren? Lauren, I commend your group for what y'all do, but I'm interesting to know out of the many things that you talked about here, are most of those come to legal resolution? Well, RV may be able to speak to that a little better than me, um, but often no. A lot of our cases, we don't see an arrest, we don't see a prosecution, um, and that doesn't mean that nothing happened. It just means that we've got a child in their statement versus oftentimes an adult in their statement, and very rarely there's any physical evidence of abuse, um, even when it recently happened. So we do forensic medical exams to look for evidence if there is it, but de delayed disclosure is so common for kids that they usually don't tell. I think the timeline for a boy to tell about a sexual abuse is more than 20 years. So by then, of course, there's no evidence. We may even be outside of a statute of limitations. So we don't see a ton of prosecutions. Um, we do see about 230 kids a year. Um, and the rate of children making up abuse allegations is about 3%. So it's very, very uncommon for abuse allegations to be fabricated. Um, so some of those kids are witnesses as well. We do see witnesses to violence or crime. Um, but yeah, so often not the arrest or the, you know, the sentencing that we all might want to see, but we don't often see that. Well, thank you for what you mm -hmm. Is it, are there any other questions for Lauren? I'd just like to say how proud I am of you Thank and you. all that you do That's and all that everybody else does as well. But. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very kind. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Georgia Exceptional Main Street Program, Ms. Bradshaw. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Tara Bradshaw. I serve with the State Office of Downtown Development with the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for giving me the floor this evening and, and let me talk to you for a couple of minutes. Um, so as the State Office of Downtown Development, we manage the Georgia Main Street Program. Uh, we have the pleasure of working with 104 cities across the state that are committed to the growth of their historic commercial districts. Um, as you may be aware, the Main Street approach is a balanced path towards revitalization with a strong focus on economic development in the context of historic preservation. So in partnership with the National Main Street Center, our participating cities are required to meet 10 standards during an annual assessment process each year in order to become an accredited Main Street America city. Uh, during this process, our office works as a team to identify those communities which have gone above and beyond to consistently excel at all 10 standards during that assessment process. These cities are known as our Georgia Exceptional Main Street Communities or our GEMS communities. So it is because of Monroe Downtown Development Authority's commitment to excellence, stable leadership, and the successful application of the Main Street approach that I'm joining you this evening to congratulate the city of Monroe on being designate, designated our newest 2021 GEMS community in the state of Georgia. So congratulations. Over the past three years alone, downtown Monroe has seen $18.4 million in private and public investment, creating 47 new businesses and netting 133 new jobs right here in your downtown. Additionally, your Main Street program has attracted over 130,000 people to downtown through civic events. You are all to be commended for your dedication to rebuilding the heart of your community. So to recognize the city of Monroe and as a token of our appreciation, uh, we'll be gifting you a gateway sign, um, recognizing your new designation, and it will read, welcome to downtown Monroe, a Georgia exceptional Main Street city. So thank you, Mayor, Council, uh, city staff, a special thanks to Sadie <coughs> and Leanne, the DDA board and the entire Monroe Main Street program uh, for all that you do. We cannot wait to see what the future holds for this incredible downtown. We're Thank excited you. too. Yeah, congratulations. That's <laughs> Thank you, Tara. It's a big deal and, and we're really excited for you. Do we ha have any questions for Tara? 
Okay, hearing none, we all know the job that, that you do, and we are all appreciative, appreciative of Sadie and Leanne and Lisa and Ross as a representative from council. Uh, Sharon, did you want to take a picture? Can I get all of you up here and... That would be wonderful. Uh, well, I Charles. appreciate your being here. <laughs> Charles, I didn't see you back there. Who else do we have? Whit. Whit, you're hiding behind the mask. That's a, that's a lot of hard work put in by a lot of folks, and we appreciate your coming tonight, Ms. Bradshaw. Next, I uh, have another proclamation for World Autism Month. Mr. Mayor, I just want to say one thing to that real quick. Yes, sir. Just as an example, and it's, it's I guess, a good example of how we've earned that dedication. Or, yeah. Um, but I wanted to just say thank you to Sadie and Leanne. Um, with National Unicorn Day last week, for me, that was a perfect example of... Awesome. Well, awesome, but a public-private partnership. Um, not a, a ton of city activity went into that until leading up to it when everybody started working extremely hard. So I know it was huge for the downtown businesses and the community. So thank you all. Yeah. That was it. That was great. Thank you. Um, Brian Robinson is, is a friend of mine. She uh, has a child who suffers from autism. Um, she is very active uh, working with, with the youth in our community. Um, she's active with FORM, uh, Fighting Oppression and Racism in Monroe. She's just a, a, a good person. Uh, I did a proclamation for her uh, last or earlier this month, and um, she is stuck in an airport at the moment. Her sisters were going to try to join us, but it doesn't look like they could make it. So. I'll read it and then I'll hold her letter for later. Whereas autism spectrum disorder affects an estimated one in 54 US children and one in 45 United States adults and is a complex condition that affects each person differently resulting in unique strengths and challenges. And whereas autism can cause challenges with verbal and nonverbal communication, social interaction and repetitive behaviors and can affect anyone regardless of race, ethnicity, gender or socioeconomic background and where autism is often accompanied by medical conditions that impact quality of life, and whereas a comprehensive collaborative approach will help to advance research, providing a better understanding of the many forms of autism while strengthening advocacy efforts and ensuring access to services and resources throughout the lifespan, and whereas early diagnosis and intervention tailored to individual needs can have lifelong benefits, easing the transition to adulthood and fostering greater independence, and whereas each person and family affected by autism should have access to reliable information and supports, and whereas autistic people should have opportunities to reach their greatest potential, and the whole of society stands to benefit from this, and whereas Monroe, Georgia is honored to take part in the annual observance of World Autism Month and World Autism Awareness Day to address the diverse needs of individuals with autism and their families. Now, therefore, I, John S. Howard, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Monroe, do hereby pro proclaim April 20, 2021 as World Autism Month and April 2nd, 2021 is World Autism Awareness Day in Monroe, Georgia to create a kinder, gentler, more inclusive world for people with autism spectrum disorders. In testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of Monroe, the city of Monroe, to be affixed this first day of April, the year of our Lord, 2021. John S. Howard, Monroe, Georgia. And I will pass this to Brianne when she get, gets back to town. Now, um, did we have any public comments okay thank you I'm moving to the public hearing for a variance at 211 Baker Street mr. Kelly yes sir thank you mr. mayor um, this variance request is by CMH real estate LLC um, for the uh, location 
on Spring Street. Uh, at two, actually, it's 211 Baker Street. They're requesting um, additional parking above what our zoning ordinance would allow. Required parking would be 35. Uh, permitted parking would be 120% of that at 42. They're requesting 69 parking spaces for that. Um, the recommendation of the Planning Commission and staff is for approval without conditions. Do you have any questions about the report or the remainder of the information there? I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Are there any questions for Patrick? Is a representative from CMH here? Hi, how are you? Spoke but not met in person. I know, I recognize the face. I'm so glad yes. to see you. Dr. Michelle Plaster of our Family Health Center. Um, what a great small town to practice medicine in. We've recognized autism and child abuse. And the mayor and I have worked in conjunction in these last months to get vaccines to our county. And you were instrumental in doing that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, and thank you all for your leadership. What we are looking to do at our Family Health Center, uh, if you all are not familiar, our clinic is at the far end of Spring Street across from the 1013 Church. And uh, we are looking to expand uh, because of this community and, and your support of what we do. We have grown from what was once just me as the sole physician to six uh, primary caregivers, four doctors and two nurse practitioners. Um, with that, we employ about 45 people. Um, and it started years back as me and two medical assistants. So we have had the blessing of growing. We try to do the right thing, and people in the community um, have found us. We have a wonderful neighbor at the 1013 Church who allows us to currently use their parking space for our staff, which means our staff are crossing Spring Street because we have simply outgrown our space, um, and it makes me very nervous that our staff are crossing Spring Street. Um, and uh, we also are using the back of our clinic as a testing center. I never thought that I would practice so much medicine in a parking lot, mm -hmm. but we have practiced a lot of medicine in a parking lot this past year. And so we have outgrown our parking space, and what we are um, looking to do, we own the property back to Baker Street, so we are looking to add an entrance off of Baker Street where we will be able to have a through to Spring Street to help with tr the traffic flow we are going to, um, with your all's uh, blessing, add a building in that same area. Uh, these days, we have to look at how we practice medicine differently, and we will have an urgent care setting in that um, area where we won't have anyone with potential infe excuse me, infectious disease in our main building. So we'll be able to separate on it anyone who's sick into a separate space altogether to protect our patients. Um, and also, we are looking to move some of our preventive medicine services to that building such as bone density, mammogram, stress testing, some of the things that we've been able to do on site to offer better services to our patients. So we're looking for more parking, and we understand we need a lot of parking space, for, primarily for the 45 people that we employ, but also for the patients that come through that we need to keep close to the building um, with handicaps and otherwise. So we'd like to extend, extend back to Baker Street for parking for the employees and allow more space toward the clinic for our patients. Thank you. Are there any questions for Dr. Plaster? As this portion of the meeting is open for public comment, do I have anyone here to speak in favor? Do I have anyone here to speak against the variance? Hearing none, I'll declare that portion of the meeting closed, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. Glad you're here. Thank you so much. Ta-da! Moving to new business. The variance at 211 Baker Street. I'll open the floor to council members for further discussion or a motion. I have a motion, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the variant. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Dickinson and a second by Mr. Ross Bradley. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Thank you, Dr. Plaster. Good luck. And, and before we move on, um, how are you doing on vaccines? Great. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. 
Moved to the appointment of the Historic Preservation Committee, uh, Commission, I'm sorry. Uh, Faye Brassie is wanting to be reappointed to the term that will expire May of 2024. Uh, we have one appointment that will expire May 1st. Faye Brassie would like to continue to serve, and I need a motion to reappoint her for the three-year term. Move to reappoint her. Have a motion by Mr. Nathan Little and a second by Mr. Second. Dickinson. Is that correct? That's correct. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Appointment of the tree board. We have uh, one appointment on the tree board that was left vacant in March of 2021 uh, when Ms. Susan Brown's term expired. We've advertised the vacant position since February and have received one applicant. Hunter Blair would like to serve on the tree board. I need a motion to appoint Mr. Hunter Blair to fill the unexpired term left vacant by Susan Brown to expire March 1st, 2024. Move to approve. Have a, you, Ross? Motion by Mr. Ross Bradley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Moving to the uh, Niederman Diesel Exhaust Extraction System Repair. Not sure if I pronounced that right. Uh, Battalion Chief Dykes is here with us. Um, this was moved from committee to full council for a vote due to the absence of committee members last week. Uh, would you like to discuss it? Andrew? Any, anything you want to mention? Um, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is uh, for $27,861.75 for industrial air purification to repair our diesel extraction system in the station. We were able to receive a federal grant that will cover 20, let's see, $26,047.62, leaving the city's portion at only $1,814.17. Perfect, are there any questions? Move approval. I have a motion by Mr. Larry Bradley, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Nathan Little. Mr. Ross Bradley. I'm sorry. I sound a lot alike tonight. It's all that, all that manliness. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Hearing none, <laughs> all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Um, moving to, to my update fairly quick tonight. Um, we have taken most of the year off. Uh, from our municipal meetings. Um, the last one that we did uh, last year, uh, hosted by Social Circle, um, I was the only one from, from the city to attend. Um, that was uh, Kevin Little Swan Song. And then uh, we had another one, our first one of this year, uh, last month. And in May, we get to host, May 20th. So I hope you'll uh, make a point of, of coming to that one. Generally, uh, Good Hope and Jersey are the two most representative, most represented, followed by Walnut Grove. But uh, I hope you can join us. We will plan, we plan on doing it here, um, and we'll have it catered. Um, last, Renee Sandoval, who works in customer service, gave birth at 917 this morning to Amelia Hope Sandoval, weighed seven pounds, eight ounces, measured 20 inches long. Um, so if you know Renee, you see her know Renee, uh, please congr congratulate her. Um, she's the kind of person that you want in customer service, just cool and calm and, and works well under pressure and, and uh, we'll be praying for that little girl. Um, that being said, are there any other questions or comments for the good of the city? Hearing none, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Ms. Malcolm and a second by Mr. Ross Bradley. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Good night, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>